As the only women's university in Rwanda, we opened actually 10 years ago, and many of our first students were genocide survivors that had experienced the Rwandan genocide in 1994. And so the opportunities for young women broadly were few and far between, especially for them to pursue higher education. And I believe that Rwanda is a very different place now. It's been 25 years since the genocide, and Rwanda has really become actually a global example and role model for how to empower women at all levels of both government, civil society, and the business sector. Elizabeth, I think it's fantastic what you're doing, and uh, it really resonates with me because I'm very familiar with uh, the post-conflict uh, situation in uh, Sri Lanka, and I think uh, Akila or, or a similar project like it will work really well in that uh, context too. Uh, I'm curious to know whether the young women who do uh, graduate from the Institute choose to stay in Rwanda, choose to stay in the country, or pursue uh, opportunities overseas. What, what's been their decision? Do they stay and give back to the country, or do they choose to uh, leave? Largely, they stay because there's so many opportunities now in the country. And when we opened Aquila and we designed our academic model, we said that we wanted to prepare women for the careers of today and the future. We have alumni that are now working in jobs like digital finance, mobile money, solar energy, computer programming, jobs that actually didn't exist even three to five years ago. And as Rwanda has been striving to lift themselves from extreme poverty after the genocide, they've been incredibly intentional, not only about including women as part of that development, but making sure that they're becoming a hub for innovation and technology and development for the entire continent. And so women are playing a key role in that development. And Elizabeth, how do you fund the education on the technology side to make sure that you constantly have the latest up-to-date technologies because it's the type of skills training that goes on that is so crucial as well when it comes to employment once people graduate, isn't it? Absolutely. So as we're focused on all these new industries and preparing women to be at the forefront of that, of course, mm. we're as an institution continually investing in the right instructors and the right training to be constantly at the forefront of new computer programming languages and right. the rate of innovation, especially in mobile applications, is moving so quickly. So we raise money from around the world. That's an important part of our model. But really, at the end of the day, we want to be a sustainable self-sufficient institution and so the mm. question we're trying to answer is how do you offer personalized high-quality education that's affordable and accessible right. so that we can scale this to millions of women across the continent